Welcome back to the second video in, on the basics of finite element analysis uh, using weighted residual methods. Uh, in this uh, video, we will be talking about the interpolation function that's uh, widely known as the shape function or the trial function in the finite element literature. Uh, if, uh, the, uh, using the Galerkin method, as we have uh, talked earlier in the uh, weighted residual methods, means that we will need to uh, use only, or the trial functions need to only satisfy the essential boundary conditions. In our problem, uh, let's uh, focus on one dimensional problems with a single degree of freedom per node, meaning that I have uh, on only uh, the function that I'm talking about has only one value that we care about, and that value lies at the nodes. So uh, the end values, these values, are going to be our essential uh, boundary conditions. Uh, these can represent maybe the displacement in a bar or the temperature in a conductive need material, the flow potential, or any other function that may be described by uh, our problem. Uh, knowing uh, only those values, we can interpolate a linear function between the two nodes, uh, at x1 and x2. Uh, or we even may use uh, the length of the bar or the length of the element, so this will be 0 and uh, node 2 will have an x-coordinate of L. Uh, using this uh, linear function, this is a very general linear uh, uh, polynomial, we can rewrite it in vector 4. Uh, like this, where we call the row vector we have here, uh, we will be calling it h of x, while the column vector we have here, which is the column of the unknown coefficients or the generalized coordinates, we will uh, just call it uh, the a vector. Now we need to force uh, the function to uh, satisfy the boundary conditions we have. So what we have to do is uh, substitute x equals 0, and then uh, put uh, u uh, of x equals u1. And then uh, also uh, at x equals l, u of x will be equal to u2. Uh, this creates two simultaneous equations that can be solved for a's, a0 and a1, in terms of u1 and u2. This matrix is called the transformation matrix. It transforms uh, our system from the generalized coordinates A0 and A1 to the generalized coordinates U1 and U2. Um, uh, then solving this equation will give us uh, a, an inverse in T, uh, of the T matrix. Uh, if we substitute it back into our original function, we will get that U of X can be presented as the row vector h of x multiplied by the inverse of the transformation matrix, then multiplied by the uh, nodal values of the function. Co combining h and t gives us what we call the trial functions n of x. Again, trial functions uh, are another form uh, or another name for interpolation functions. These trial functions will look like this. 1 minus x over L and x over L, which uh, are both uh, linear functions. Instead of having a constant in one term and uh, an x in the other term, now we have linear functions in both terms. Plotting these two uh, trial functions, we will find that the first one actually uh, passes, uh, sorry, these um, here are not really uh, properly aligned. Uh, the first uh, function, n1, will start with a value of 1 at x equals 0 and end with a value of 0 at x equals L, while uh, the second function will start with a value of 0 at x equals 0 and end with a, uh, with a value of x, uh, sorry, uh, uh, the value of 1 at x equals L. It also can be presented as a series in a series form. Uh, to, set, uh, to be similar to what we used to do in the weighted residual uh, method. So now we have the trial functions or the interpolation functions. In the next video, we will show how, can we, uh, how we can obtain the element equations using those trial functions 
and that's what we call the element equation or uh, and the element matrix. 